This is the GoVex T 2.4 Plus. And the T stands for transport. That's what this little rack thing is back here. That can hold 400 pounds. And you can actually convert it kind of back into a second passenger seat. You can see there's a, a, a sort of an extra footrest area there. Um, the other version of this bike is the S 2.4 and 2.4 plus. And that one, just the seat kind of comes back. It looks a little sportier, but you don't have as many options. And I really love this rack thing because in addition to just being able to carry so much weight and they do have accessories like a big plastic box thing, you can also um, run electronics. There's like 70 amps that you can pull off of the main uh, batteries with, with this. And so you could be cooling it or heating it or whatever you wanted. So it really makes this very utilitarian in that sense. Um, they've also got this other electrical outlet while I'm on the subject. Check this out, 20 amps right there. So imagine, if you will, that it's winter time, you're super cold, but you've got a heated jacket, you could plug it right in and you'd be nice and toasty. I love that, it's very, it's very cool. So Govex is a company with roots back all the way to Emacs. They started Emacs in like 2005, 2006. It's a German company out of Bavaria. That's a state in Germany and uh, they do a really good job. Eventually, Emacs kind of got sold to Vmoto and sort of acquired by kind of the Chinese manufacturers that were making it. And they, it sounds like the quality went downhill a little bit. And these guys transitioned to Govex. This is a really high quality machine and they're you know still doing a great job with this. They no longer manufacture in Asia, probably as a result of that you know relationship change <laughs> at that time or the hostile takeover. <clears throat> and so now these are manufactured in Poland. So uh, just really kind of neat to see um, how they've carried on. They've still got, a, they've just kind of refined this. This is a high quality electric scooter. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into to some of the other characteristics of this. So really nice seat. I actually use this to take my uh, motorcycle safety course. You know, I was doing a bunch of different scooters at that, but just the weight on this, it's like 265 pounds as opposed to 400 plus on like, gas-powered motorcycles and even some of the other electric scooters okay and that's significantly lighter because of the lithium ion batteries okay and the batteries you can see there's like kind of in there so the batteries are all fairly low in center it's uh, 72 volts about 40 amp hours so you're getting a lot of capacity with this thing the range is you know somewhere between 40 and 80 miles and I know that's like a huge spread but the reason is because it depends on how fast you're going and there is um, sort of an economy mode so if you turn that off it's zippier when you start but then you know you're burning more electricity more quickly so kind of leave that on if you want to extend your range so it's really cool also the plus you were probably wondering earlier like what's the difference between 2.4 and 2.4 plus well you get like some extra speed right so the t2.4 goes like 25 miles per hour top speed it's more of like a neighborhood electric uh, bike right so you're going through the neighborhood you don't really need to go faster but <clears throat> i'm reviewing this here in austin texas actually this is being sold by uh, electric avenue i uh, think these guys are the only company that imports them into the united states right now and they ship all over the u.s so if you're interested in one of these they could ship it to you between you know, 300 to $700, depending on where you're at. Um, anyway, here in Texas, people drive a little bit faster, even just, you know, these type of roads. It's not a highway, but it's it requires, you know, 35 plus miles per hour. And so being able to go 38, you know, almost 40, you can get around a lot more. And this would be a great bike for people who are maybe university students, that kind of thing. They also have um, the S, again, Sport, uh, 3.4, right? So that steps it up and then you're up into like the 50 plus uh, mile per hour um, top speeds. So definitely worth worth calling that out. You can see on this side, there's this nice big uh, belt. This is a Kevlar belt drive. So it goes back up to a canister motor that's up there. And so it actually, it, I think it is mounted on the swing arm. You can see in here. So it's it's still not really unsprung weight. It's still part of the, the system, which is only attached on that left side, by the way, which might make it easier to do wheel maintenance on this side, on the right side of the bike, um, starboard. But um, yeah, it's a lot smaller and lighter weight than sort of the hub uh, m motors that I've seen on some electric bicycles and some electric scooters. There is some complexity with the belt. So every 10,000 miles, you might wanna have the belt checked and tightened 
but that's a 5,500 watt motor. I think it's like 4.5 horsepower or something. So it's actually pretty capable and definitely zippy. Uh, this bike accelerates really nicely and the suspension is, is great. Um, <clears throat> back on this side, see they've set up the suspension. They've kind of externalized some of the, uh, uh, I think it's oil for, for sort of dampening. And again, there's only one suspension element, so by externalizing it, they can still keep it compact, but still have a nice um, dampening quality to it back here. So really cool engineering. Again, German engineered and designed, built in Poland. Um, it says the tires in Slovenia. And then this is a 13 inch diameter wheel, front and rear. And so being a little bit smaller, it's lighter weight. You'll notice that the rake on the front isn't super aggressive, meaning it doesn't, it doesn't like, swing way out like this so steering is actually pretty quick and easy then again just the weight on this bike like standing with it at like a stop sign or stoplight is not very hard even wheeling it around if you're parking it or whatever it's not as intimidating as like a full-size motorcycle of course it's a lot um, quieter and cleaner and it's just much much more affordable um, to, to ride than a gas bike that you know we, I was messing around with this this older like Yamaha and um, they're just trying to go to reserve or normal in the fuel and you've got to mess around with the clutch shifting and all that. This, it's just twist. You twist the throttle, it goes. And you pick the economy or no economy. It's super simple, really enjoyed it. And people in their class had a lot easier time with this, um, using this to learn how to ride. So anyway, and rant, 130 by 60 <clears throat> millimeter is the size. So 130 uh, circumference, 60 sort of half diameter there. Uh, and that's the tires. It felt really good when I rode. It's got nice fenders, place for mounting a license plate, turn signals and everything work really nicely on this. To come up to the front, I actually like the look of this and you can kind of aim the headlight right here. It's really kind of cool looking in my opinion. Nice suspension up front, hydraulic disc brakes in the front and rear. Pretty nice stuff. They're using cast uh, rims here so instead of spokes so this isn't going to go out of true or anything and, and it just looks nice with the, the black paint I think being a 2013 model one of the things they've updated is the kickstand for 2015 is like a little burlier like the the full stand but the uh, side stand is what I usually use and it does a pretty great job so not a huge change there and I think the prices are pretty similar and there aren't a whole lot of options on where to buy this in the US. The mirrors work pretty well. They kind of, you know, they're slim and stuff, kind of a unique size, um, sort of a diamond shape or something like that. Nice big brake levers. I think that's kind of kind of a good overview. A little bag holder here so you can clip your bag in. We take the key out and we go down here and then twist it to the left. We can open up this really fairly large sort of storage compartment, locking storage. So you could, you know, put some gear in there or whatever. I'm not sure if a helmet would quite fit, depends on your head size, but just a nice place to store some extra stuff out of the way if you weren't using like a rack or a backpack. I like that they've got a built-in um, sort of a converter. So you don't have to carry around a, a power brick like you do with a lot of electronics. It's already built into the bike. You just plug this in and you know, the, the cords, it's pretty good. It seems like it's maybe like 10 feet or something. You might have to use an extension cord depending on, you know, if you're at an apartment or whatever. And that's the one question about these 265 pounds. You're still not going to be carrying this up your stairs or park, parking it inside. Uh, but you know, charging it is like four to five hours. And actually I think even a little bit shorter than that, it might even be like three hours, um, because of this, this charger being a little bit of a quick charger. Got some more information here. Um, just on tire pressure and everything. I just want to emphasize like this is a it's a pretty comfortable bike. Just the weight, the suspension, all of that feels really nice. So to start it up, kind of like hop on here and turn this ignition to on and then kind of you don't have to activate the bike yet. The display sort of comes to life and you know you've got your speedometer there. It's digital. It's kind of like an a grayscale LCD. We got our speed here, miles per hour, an odometer, and then there's the full empty on battery charge right there. And this does light up, so when you when you turn the bike on, 
it's actually kind of this blue color. I'm gonna show you the lights while we're at it. There's the headlight. Let's see here, if we do the turn signal. There you go, you can kind of see that in action. Front and rear, very nice. Um, so anyway, let's kill the turn signals here. Boom, a little horn, <coughs> kind of cute. Uh, I guess that's that's sort of it. There, there's also a display up here. You can see the turn signal and you can see your brights right over there. A lot of good options. And I think that's a low battery indicator right here. And you can kind of change modes and select different things in here with this extra button. So there's a trip meter and odometer. Pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. But that keeps this from getting too cluttered and complicated, which is nice. Really the big feature is this sort of economy mode. Um, whether or not you want that extra boost or you want to save your your battery but with that good range you know 40 to 80 miles if you're riding just kind of easy on this thing let's say you get 50 or 60 miles on average because um, you ride up some hills and you do some stuff like that that's still pretty good it's a pretty impressive uh, system so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and just wheel this thing around and try to show it in action go okay kickstands are all up it's just super quiet I'm gonna walk it out here and I'm in a contained environment here a parking lot so I'm just gonna cruise around carefully up to 20 miles per hour there and again riding one-handed so I'll do some more footage with like a mount So I was mentioning the tires earlier. These ones are actually tubeless, so they're just a little bit easier to work on. Um, you know, it's, this is, it seems to me it's, it's very efficient. It's really well built, uh, and it has that nice ride quality. I'm about to get back on to do some more riding tests. Yesterday, it was, it was raining a lot. It's, it's, the sky is blue today, but I was getting soaked on this thing, and no problems. There's no, the rain doesn't impact it. There was a little bit of water that got in kind of under the seat right here uh, and I think that's again because this is the transport version not a whole lot opened it up and there was a little bit of water we kind of pulled that out earlier but okay I'm gonna hop hop on this thing and go for uh, another ride that kickstand there we go turn the ignition on there we go engine we go really good stopped really well and that was on economy so I'm gonna take economy off yeah definitely a little peppier here here's the track we were on over here let me go through some of the curves there we go some low speed maneuver yeah just really good balance here if you have to put your foot down, you know, it's it's really not too difficult to support the weight of this bike. There's the mirrors here. Woo! The kickstand can be a little bit hard to reach sometimes down there, just kind of got to get used to it. I, I like to mount the bike before I kick the kickstand 
Um, and I found that sometimes I'm, you know, I'm trying to struggling to get to it. But there's this nice wide platform. Uh, it's, it's pretty comfortable to sit on. You know, I'm about 5'9", and it seems like there's enough room here between my knees and the, uh, the grips and everything. go. It's a nice stop. Cornering. Well, that's the Govex T 2.4 Plus. For the full write-up on this, including all the specs and some pictures and stuff, I'll see you back at electricridereview.com. If you own this bike, maybe you're in Europe where they're a little bit more prevalent and you wanna do a video response to share something I missed or just sound off in the forums, go for it. I will see you back at the site. Ride safe.